In this video, we're going to try to answer this question. How do you actually free the enlistment on demand? And so basically you figure that out through reversing. There is a function which is called TMP finalize enlistment, which ends up setting that finalized flag and it drops the ref count. And so through reversing, you can figure out that this TMP finalize enlistment function is called in kernel when calling the commit complete API from New Zealand. And in the recovery code inside TM recover resource manager, we know that it drops the ref count that it was holding right before it relocks the resource manager mutex. And then anything else that might be holding a reference to that enlistment also needs to be taken into account in order to drop the reference count to zero. And then only the kernel will finally free the enlistment. But in order to actually deal with the enlistment from userland, we actually created it with create enlistment and got a handle in userland. So we technically still have a reference in userland to that enlistment. So it won't be freed until we get rid of that reference. So basically just closing the handle from userland should be enough to drop the reference count to zero. So the enlistment is effectively freed. And so you can confirm from reversing and debugging that indeed that is the case. So the naive approach to doing this, because you don't know what KL instruments to free necessarily, is to just free them all. And that's very much enough to at least confirm that you can trigger a use after free by forcing the race window open with the debugger. But the bad part of this is that if you are imagining real world exploitation of this and you want to win the race and you don't know which enlistment to free, every time you attempt to trigger the race, which you might have to do thousands of times, you would be creating a whole bunch of K enlistments and then freeing them all. And you would have to be reconfiguring that over and over again for each attempt. And that would create a lot of noise on the kernel pool which is not ideal from a reliability perspective. And so there is an, actually a better approach to doing this, but it is good to do the naive way first because it's faster to implement and it helps confirming your mental model. So the better approach is to, sh is to try to figure out which enlistment to free specifically in kernel, but figuring that out from userland, obviously. So here I advise you pause the video and try to think about any ideas you might have to figure out which enlistment is currently being handled in the TM Recover Resource Manager loop that we would want to free by closing its handle. And then you can move to the next slide. So basically the whole point of the TM Recover Resource Manager function is that for every enlistment in the list, it is queuing a notification related to that particular enlistment and you can query the notification from userland. So the point of the vulnerable code is to tell what enlistment has just been touched. And so it is basically leaking you its internal state about which enlistment was the most recent one it touched. And so if it is stuck somewhere in an infinite loop or stuck trying to log the resource manager mutex and you query all of the notifications that have been queued into the notification queue, the very last enlistment that is referenced in that notification queue is the enlistment that will have been potentially used after freed. And so that, that is the only one that you need to free effectively. It may not be that obvious at first, but after spending quite a bit of time reversing and testing, it should become obvious that that is the best approach. And so inside the TM recover resource manager function, there is a call to TMP set notification resource manager. And that TMP set notification resource manager function basically puts something in the notification queue of the resource manager about that particular en enlistment. And then from userland, you can call the get notification resource manager API as we have been doing from the labs. And you can either correlate the enlistment that got the most recent notification based on its GUID, which is a unique identifier associated with every enlistment, or alternatively, because really 
everything the kernel will be doing is deterministic based on the userland program you wrote and you know how many enlistments you are creating that are going to be introduced into that linked list in the kernel and then force TM Recover Resource Manager to process. So you can basically just count the number of notifications that were queued and correlate it to which enlistment it is in your user and locally tracked array of enlistments, which is probably the fastest and most effective approach. Because basically when you are trying to win a race, you want to figure out information as fast as possible. And so doing a grid compare is a lot slower than just doing an array index. And so basically the strategy is that the function is going to unlock the resource manager and send the notification. We can correlate the notification to the enlistment and free it by closing the handle. And then we remove the infinite loop in the debugger and then a use after free will hopefully trigger. And there are basically two ways that you can detect it. You can technically just debug and just step in the debugger after you have unpatched the infinite loop and then confirm manually using the bang pull command that the enlistment chunk is freed or has been replaced by something else. The other way is there is a debugging feature by Microsoft called driver verifier. And basically what the driver verifier does is that it sets up memory pools in a special way that allows it to detect overruns and use after freeze automatically. It is really slow to run on a system, but you can specify that you only want allocations from a specific driver to have this ver verifier functionality applied on. And basically what you can do is to just apply the driver verifier on the tm.sys driver. And then if a use after free happens, it will just BSODs the machine right away. And because you have a windbag attached, it will give you a crash analysis where you can confirm if it was the chunk associated with the enlistment that was just used after freed. So this is the, the function we provide in the lab for counting notifications. The way it works is it calls the get notification resource manager API a bunch of times and increment a counter each time it to count the number of notification we encountered so far. And you call that API until you get a timeout error indicating there is no new notification available. And when that happens, you just return the total count of notifications received. And so after this function returns, you can use the counter as an index in your array of enlistments that you are tracking in New Zealand. 